All right, we're continuing with Alachot uh, Tzedakah and Maaser. So yesterday we were talking about the obligation that we have not only to give, but also to maintain a person who was, let's say, rich and became, became poor, uh, to maintain him with somewhat of his, uh, <clears throat> somewhat with his uh, former, uh, former style. So you simply would not, as they say, snap and slowly graduate him into, into, into that. However, like anything else, there is a limit, and that's what we started to talk yesterday. There is a limit. So yesterday we explained how much we have to provide them, and so on and so forth. However, and even if he was a, a rich person, and he got used to life of luxury, and then he became poor, and if he was going to suffer so much that he might uh, have, uh, he might even die, you know, he'll like commit suicide from, from the, the thing of it. Even that has two rules. So the rule number one, if there are poor people, more poor people in the neighborhood or in that we are taking care of that haven't yet received their basic needs, here we're talking about the guy, arguments like providing him with a chauffeur and a car and, you know, maybe a steak. So instead of driving a Maybach, he's driving a Camry with a chauffeur. And instead of having a, uh, I don't know, a foie gras, from uh, from uh, from France with caviar from Russia, uh, so we you know, give him some I don't know taramasalata from uh, you know some egg salad uh, you know with the fish egg salad uh, or Matthias I think it's probably better and you know you know you get the drift. However, when there are people who haven't yet met the basic needs, they they get the go ahead uh, because that's the klal ha'ani yoter kodem. If I need to evaluate who to give more money, whoever is more poor gets first. Okay, whoever is more poor gets first. Uh, therefore, after and and after we supply them with their basic needs of all the poor people, whether it's food, clothing, housing, and education, and education of the children, education of the children. However, if the poor person takes the money that we give him and goes on vacation, you know, he's going to get a whooping. But uh, we, we, as a community, as a society, are obligated to provide the children of the poor people with proper education. Now, I am not talking about the fact that maybe you're a barber and you're making everything cash, and you are maybe driving a Maybach, and you come into your show, you says, I don't have money, look at my W-2 for my zero arm and welfare, right? We're not talking about this. We're talking about poor, poor people. And this is, this is something, this is a very serious matter that we have to take into account. We have to provide these children with proper education. We are responsible for their education. That's a part of the basic needs. And if yeshiva, for argument's sake, doesn't want to accept the child because the community, as the community, we're coming to, I don't think there will be yeshiva like this. I, I don't think. But if the, let's say a certain yeshiva doesn't want to accept the kid to the yeshiva, an argument like, let's say tuition costs $8,000, and the community says, listen, fine, that's for the people. We as the bait as the community, we're going to take from our kupatz daka, we're going to give you 5000 If they say no, I'm sure they can take him to bait it, because that's one of the obligation. Okay? However, there's another, another way to give daka is to give a charity to a person like this from the, what is it called, kupatsi burit from the public fund or from private people, right? And it's an obligation to give the Ashir Kol Tzorko based on the Pasuk that says, Asher Yechsarlo, whichever he's missing. We have to do our best to give him whatever is missing. And it's a very difficult thing to cope with from people who went down from their riches to become a regular person. It's, it's, it's a crisis. They tell them, it's too bad, I don't really care. But the Torah understands the psyche of the person better, and we are here to make people live. We're not here to people commit suicide and and or, or, or to do crazy things. So the chaselo, that's his niece, the chaselo. We have to give it to him. Of course, with limitations. Now, after that, the second condition is, is it's very nice that we help you out. Okay, so we got you a camera with a chauffeur and so on and so forth. However, we need to educate the poor person who became, the rich person who became poor to live in greater simplicity. 
Okay, he needs to be educated, right? In other words, he needs to acquire the skills to be able to adjust to his new life, and this is obligation, our obligation to do so. And the reason is very simple, in order for him not to become a burden on the public, that the public now from this point on will have to provide him for the rest of his life with a with a with a car with a chauffeur and uh, and some uh, you know caviar on a, on a silver spoon or coke or something you know but you know what I'm saying and what we were commended to on a person like this it simply make his life easier the transition easier or the decline in so called quality of life we should make it easier until he gets used to it. However, if we're going to, if we're going to take care of this rich person for a long time, right? Uh, it's going to it's going to become a problem because we're going to eventually hurt the other people who really need it when he is isn't used to luxury, you know. So it's going to do it. So we have to use a certain common sense when it comes down to that. Uh, however, if uh, and if we if we're going to if we're going to say well he let us again, you know ran in front of the guy you know he was he couldn't find him a guy to run in front of him so let's let's call it the chauffeur so he let us again became the chauffeur for him so the the terror says is just lifnim mishuratadin he wanted to go the extra mile if I can't do it I can't do it you know I'm sorry there's no way we could provide it in other words if there are a lot of poor people in the neighborhood however we is going to be helping this person. Or help the rest of the people. So we don't do respect. You know, I can't do it because there's very thing. Of course, if you want to do something, the you could do so, but you're not obligated to do something like that. Uh, and uh, and 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 uh, you know, you don't know the result of you know of, of the person. The person would say, "Oh my goodness, he Zaken is running in front of me. Lela Zaken is driving me around." You know, I gotta I gotta adjust to my situation. So he did it. There's, you know, you need to evaluate. It's not a blank check across the board for everything. As much as we have to be accounted for the responsibility that we have for the poor people, the, those people have to understand that as well. And they need to do something about it. In other words, they cannot sit there and, uh, and say, no, I don't want to work. You know, it's easier for me to, <laughs> to, to get paid. That's not good. The Torah sees that as a very dangerous uh, mahalach to be in. The Torah and Chachamim always sought to have a person's independence as a is a is a something to praise and to strive for, not to be dependent on handouts from other people, and it's a very big concept in Halacha, in the Rambam, in some other poskim about not to become a burden on the tzibur. Of course, we are not getting into the discussion of people learning and call it, and uh, we're not talking about this. It's a totally different discussion, and it's absolutely not the uh, not the argument that most people are making. Okay. However, I do have to say that if somebody says that the guys who learn in kolel, the guys who are serious learning in yeshiva and learning in kolel, they're mamash moser nefesh to the continuation of the Torah. If somebody tells you that they are leeches, leeches that enjoy handouts from people, and somebody else is back, you should tell them, well, they're willing to do something that now you're willing to do. They're willing to mamash be, you know, uh, sacrifice everything they have for the continuation of Torah, which you're not willing to do. So therefore, it's your obligation, it's your honor to give them the money. You should see yourself as a, uh, as a, a tremendous chut on your behalf that you had an option to help people like that. And if this is your attitude, you get a big problem. You don't know what it is, how hard it is to sit down in Kolel for, for 12, 13, 16 hours a day and to get paid a thousand dollars a month. Okay? I'm sure if, if you could, you would switch. I'm not quite sure that those guys who sit down in Kolel who are serious about it, will be willing to switch for all the money in the world. They're not interested in that. They're interested in, in, in learning and teaching and spreading Torah. So you got to be very careful before you enter those arguments. And if somebody enters those arguments with you, you got to stop them on a dime. So, uh, you know, if we do something like this, you know, maybe uh, if, if, we see, if you see to the person that you provided him with extra because he, he was a rich man, we said, listen, I need to make the proper adjustments. Uh, that's fine, so maybe that will cause him to, to do so. And if you see that he's just a spoiled brat, 
So Habibi, you know, we, we did what we did. From now on, we have other things to do, and, you know, you've got to move on with that. Questions about this, Rabbi Good. So tomorrow, Be'ezat HaShinor is Thursday. We're going to talk about the third por- portion here. It's about giving tzedakah uh, by, and using who, who can we use for uh, what we call gabait tzedakah, those people who will be in charge of the charity and disposing it and so on and so forth. How do we actually take this, uh, how do we actually nominate these people to be in charge of those funds? Because sometimes in the charity fund could be a lot of money. And I know this, there are some unbelievable people among, among us, you know, in, in Brooklyn and places like this. Uh, they, they, they give hundreds of thousands of dollars for tzedakah. I know one individual in, in, in Brooklyn, in Purim, he gives something close to $100,000. You go to his house, they give you tickets, you know, numbers. You have to stand in line. They give you tickets. So... You know, those people exist. So Bezat Hashem will talk about this tomorrow. Until then, if you have questions, you could ask those questions at rabbagaon at gmail.com. Uh, and you can go to... Uh, huh? I'm sorry? Go find me account. Go find me? Okay, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. He's saying go find me. Find me an account. Fund, okay, fund. For, okay, fine. So you can look us there also. I don't know even what it is. Those guys know everything, and there's the Yeshiva uh, website at yeshivaetzion.com. Uh, you know, look us there, promote us there, share the wealth, spread the words, and have a great day.